Good morning, or depending on you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told how to voice radio. So today, I need to show you one of the new GX cards that was just revealed at the Pokemon World Championships opening ceremony. Now, I have done a video that goes through all of the announcements nice and quick with a little bit of analysis. There's a link to that one in the description. But I promised you guys a video about every new GX that comes out. And ladies and gentlemen, I intend to deliver on that. Now, the one that really jumps out to me is Guzzlord GX. So we're going to start with this boy, and he is a big boy. Now, 210 HP is about standard for a Stage 1 GX. Retreat cost of 4 is huge, but then again, it is expected. Do remember that that does mean that Heavy Ball then becomes an option. Resistance to Psychic, really nice with stuff like Espeon and Garbodor running around. And Weakness to Fighting is expected and annoying, given that Gardevoir decks are likely to be playing Gallade. Persimian could well still be a thing after the rotation. And of course, everybody can just put a Marsh Shadow GX into their deck to take down all of these fighting weak Pokemon. And we already see things like Darkrai and Drampa seeing play. The more fighting weak Pokemon that get played, the more likely it is that we are going to see cards like Marsh Shadow being played in a lot of decks. Now, the one thing I cannot comment on too much is where it says Ultra Beast up here. I don't quite know what that means. We know it is a basic Pokemon, and obviously I know that Ultra Beast means it's one of the Ultra Beast Pokemon. We know this. However, does that actually make a difference? Is there a new game mechanic? Are there going to be certain stadiums, certain tools, certain item cards that interact differently with the Ultra Beasts or only interact with the Ultra Beasts? So, for instance, back in the day we had Chorus Machine which allowed you to search your deck for a plasma energy and attach it to one of your plasma Pokemon. That was a special mechanic just for Pokemon. Will we get similar cards which only work for Ultra Beast? The honest answer is, I don't know, but I kind of hope that we do. So, let's look at the attacks for Guzzlord, and do remember that in all my videos, unless I forget, I do pop little time descriptors in the description, so you can jump straight to any of the attacks if you wish. For one Dark Energy, discard the top five cards of your deck. If any of them are energy cards, attach them to this Pokemon. Now you can already see that the second and third attacks here are incredibly expensive. So that means that this setup attack could be incredibly useful. The problem is, what happens if you discard your really important supporters like Guzma. There is no Versus Seeker next format when this comes out. If you discard stuff like Guzma, you might not be able to get it back. That is going to be a little bit of a problem. Now, one thing you could play in Guzzlord decks if you really want to take advantage of this first attack is you could just play Puzzle of Time and just go with the first attack and if you do end up discarding anything that you really didn't want to then you can mitigate that using Puzzle of Time. Either way you don't have to use this first attack as a setup attack but it's an option. You can use Puzzle of Time to mitigate and ladies and gentlemen the other two attacks are so gosh darn good and they are amazing that you know what I think it's worth taking the risk with the first attack. You can always play stuff like Rescue Stretcher and Super Odd to get your Pokemon back. Super Odd gets your energy. If you are playing any special energy, you can use Special Charge, though I don't think you probably will. And then, of course, Puzzle of Time can get everything else. Now, the first thing to note about the next two attacks, they both take five energy. Now, there are plenty of ways to get around this. You can use Double Colorless for the second attack, which is nice. You could always use Max Elixir, given that Guzzlord is a basic Pokemon. But don't forget, you've got Darkrai GX. Darkrai GX allows you to recover him from the discard with a Dark Energy attached. You can then use something like an Energy Switch to move the energy 
to Guzzlord. You could even use something like a Wishful Baton, so that if one of your Pokemon gets KO'd, then free basic energy can then move to Guzzlord on the bench. Although, do remember that if you are relying on Wishful Baton, first of all, no choice banned, but second of all, your opponent can use Field Blower to really ruin your day here. And as a side note, before I get to mention it elsewhere in the video, do remember that Altar of the Moon will give you free retreat, given that you're playing Darkness Energy, so that retreat of four is really not the end of the world. There, I mentioned it. Yay! So... There are plenty of options for getting the energy on here, and honestly, between Double Colorless Energy, Max Elixir, and Darkrai, you should be okay. The second attack here, Tyrannical Hole, 180 damage, is frankly ridiculous. Now, I've told you that Turtonator GX is great, because it can do 160 in a basic attack. Well, Guzzlord is a basic Pokemon that can hit 180, and the numbers here are amazing. Firstly, 180 gets most of your basic GXs. Now, there are some like Lapras and Turtonator that have 190 HP, but stuff like Drampa will be going down anyway. But if you go and attach a Choice Band to Guzzlord, you're then hitting 210. And ladies and gentlemen, there is only a single Stage 1 Pokemon that is a GX that has more than 210 HP, and that is a Lowland Muck, which I do not expect to see very much play. So with a Choice Band here, you should be getting a one-hit KO on all of the Stage 1 GXs. You could then add a Professor Kukui to hit 230, the problem is, most of the Stage 2 GXs have 240 or 250, and the one really notable Stage 2 GX that has 230 HP is Gardevoir, but Gardevoir has a resistance to darkness, so will not actually be getting one hit KO'd by a Guzzlord with Choice Band and Professor Kukui. But make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen, this is an extremely expensive attack but you're hitting a base 180. And this isn't like those Charizard cards where you've got to make it as a stage two and then start trying to accelerate the energy. You can go with double colorless energy and max elixir, and you could easily get a Guzzlord going on turn two. And that is a very exciting proposition. And that's if you're not using the first attack, and I'm going right out and saying it, especially with Puzzle of Time, I think it might be worth a look. And then we get to the GX attack. And the GX attack is another very exciting attack. For five darkness energy. Now, you know I'm always not a fan of things like this. Because here's the big issue. If you go three dark and a double colorless to get the second attack going, you've then got to attach extra dark energy to get the third attack going, i.e. you might be having to attach extra energy. Now, the good news here is that if you get five dark, you can use the second or the third attack, but it means that if you use double colorless to cheat the second attack, you cannot use it to cheat the third. But it does 100 damage. Um, it, it's all right. It's not amazing, but it's all right. It's fine. Decent amount of damage. If you KO using this attack, you take two more prize cards. That, ladies and gentlemen, is absolutely absurd. If you can KO a GX with this, you take four prizes. And we don't really have that many relevant GXs that are weak to dark. Something like Lunala is, for instance, but it's not seeing a huge amount of play. But if we ever see a really good GX that's weak to darkness, then with a choice band, you're hitting 260 and taking four prizes. But even as it is, just KO some little Pokemon. KO an Alolan Vulpix. KO a Kirlia. KO an Octillery. And you're taking free prizes off some random low HP, non-GX Pokemon. That is amazing, ladies and gentlemen. That is utterly, ridiculously amazing. And you can see where the balance is coming with this card. The second attack, 180, flat out, no downside, is Redonk. Third attack... 
100 damage, but you take two extra prize cards. I mean, something like Rayquaza Deoxys Legend that I mentioned in a recent video, one of the old Legend cards, that was really good. It even won Worlds in 2011. That was really good because it took an extra prize. The Lugia EX with the Overflow ability, the Plasma one, was really good because it took an extra prize. This one takes two. I mean, two. You can get a free prize turn off an Octillery, off an Alolan Vulpix. It really is quite ridiculous, ladies and gentlemen, and I absolutely love it. So, in summary here, yes, it's expensive, but the first attack can really help you, and although it's expensive, it's worth it. And unlike, like I've said in the past, Charizard, the fact that it's on a basic Pokemon that can use Max Elixir makes a world of difference, because it is really not that weird for you to be taking free prizes with Glutton GX on the second turn of the game. Although, do remember, ladies and gentlemen, that if you do take free prizes really early, that will make you very vulnerable to the supporter card N, because that will give you a hand size of three when you might have kind of 30 or 40 cards left in your deck. I am going to give Guzzlord four wassies. I don't care about the attack cost. This has got to be worth testing. It's not a mid to late game Pokemon. It's an early game Pokemon for early big attacks. You will need a, a more sensible lower energy attack cost Pokemon probably to close out the game. But that's fine. Or open with a low energy Pokemon and then get your final free prizes with Glutton. Either way, this has got to be worth a test. But I want to know what you think about Goslord. Chuck it down in the comments. Go nuts. Be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. That's where the live action is. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, etc., then find me at patreon.com slash PTCG Radio. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.